Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the closing interviews here live from Singapore. We've got two back-to-back -back interviews uh, to finish off here in Singapore. Alongside the interviews, of course, you still have a number of other content on the other side of the agenda. Please enjoy this conversation and all other conversations are being recorded and will be available on demand, hopefully on Friday. If not, we'll get them all to you, we promise, on Monday. Now, one of the things we love to see at Fit Summit is entrepreneurial spirit. It's great to see new businesses being set up. It's even more encouraging to see new businesses getting set up throughout this pandemic and the disruption. We're proud now to welcome into our next interview, GJ Wee, founder and managing partner of Trapeze, a very exciting new brand coming out of Singapore, launching in the next few weeks. GJ, great to see you. How are you? Hey Ross, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, sorry I couldn't be down in the studio. Absolute pleasure. Look, we know you're busy getting the business set up, which is exciting times for you. Let's talk about the business. Let's talk about the brand. Um, what are the inceptions to, tra to Trapeze? What is the reasons behind the name for Trapeze? Uh, can you share a bit more about the story? Sure. Um, so essentially, Trapeze is a wellness-focused lifestyle company um, incepted here in Singapore. Uh, we're building out a portfolio of health and wellness concepts. And the first concept that um, we're building actually is a holistic wellness club called Trapeze Rep Club. And it's uh, a four-story space in a pre-war shop house uh, along Tanjong Pagar Road. And the club features programming um, that spans across 8,000 square feet. Uh, so we've got a health cafe, we've got a yoga studio, gym, uh, reflexology lounge, uh, outdoor cold plunge and sauna, which I'm personally very excited about. Um, we've also got recreation rooms that, that are going to house our mental health practitioner as well as team experts. What was the reason behind choosing the name Trapeze? So um, my favorite song um, is actually called The Trapeze Swinger by Iron and Wine. I'm not sure if you know it, but um, it's, a, it's a really beautiful song about life, love, um, loss. And um, I was inspired um, just listening on, on Spotify. I was hiking on a mountain in New Zealand, actually, trying to come up with names um, for, for the company. Um, and I was like, hey, actually, Trapeze kind of, it, it works, you know, where... The, the, actually, the ethos for, for uh, us here is to help people find balance in their lives. Um, and, you know, the trapeze act in a circus is, is really all about finding that balance. So, yeah, that's, that's how the, the name came about. Now, you're building your own ecosystem. And I suppose what we've realized in the past few months, and especially through this disruptive period of COVID, uh, Gigi, is the power of community, the power that nests within an ecosystem. How important was it for you when you were building the vision of Trapeze to think about it holistically as not as a one-stop sh shop, but as a, a, an umbrella that would encompass a lot of different offerings to your members? Yeah, I mean, I think it really... The one stop shop idea really came about because I personally was facing um, a problem of having to go to so many different places um, to get my wellness needs, um, to have my wellness needs met. Um, so, for example, you know, you have to go to one uh, place for personal training, you've got to go to another place for yoga and health food, physiotherapy, and so on. So, you know, I wanted to create a space where there was true integration uh, of products and services, um, where all the wellness professionals that I, I was seeing would be communicating with each other um, and, and you know, really trying to come up with the best solutions for, for my well-being. And, you know, I think having such diverse services in one co-located space um, also helps to uncomplicate people's lives, yeah. um, you know, reduces the need for multiple packages or, or, you know, even having to travel to and from various wellness locations. How is the customer journey going to be different? I mean, obviously, you're mapping this out right now. You're understanding how you can create something unique, create something experiential for every single person that walks through your door. How are you envisaging that just now, Gigi? Yeah, so, I mean, in terms of the customer journey, um, we're really trying to show up and be there 
each touch point, um, you know, from pre-engagement to post, um, whether they're visiting our social media, uh, browsing our website, or you know, if they're at our club. Um, and you know, we, we try to find ways to to always be communicating. And you know, while we are a wellness company first and foremost, um, we also aim to be a hospitality focused company. So what I mean by that, um, one of the books that we we have discussed um, during a trapeze team book club um, was actually Danny Meyer setting the table. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, Ross, but Danny is an FNB entrepreneur. Um, who started many successful uh, concepts like Shake Shack, um, Eleven Madison Park. And, you know, one of the key takeaways for me uh, was really that every consumer facing company uh, at its heart has to be a hospitality company, no matter what, what industry you're in. And, you know, this is something we're placing a, a lot of importance at at the club. We want to be able to, to really surprise and delight every guest that walks through our doors. Um, you know, whether they're taking a yoga class with our instructors, getting therapy with our mental health practitioner, we want the experience to really be top notch, best in class. And you know, after we leave, we want to find out what that, how the, how their experience was, um, and if there's anything we can do better. So you know, we are always contactable through WhatsApp, through email. Um, they can DM us on social, through Google. I think you know, always listening to the customer. Being ready to iterate, being open to feedback is so important. Now, the good thing about multiple services is having multiple opportunities to engage and multiple experiences to offer your members. Uh, that's obviously a great plus, but of course, the, the defining point of that is getting the execution on that properly to make sure every one of those experiences is best in class. How across all of these sure. new services, how have you got that in mind? How are you benchmarking and then going to be executing best in class services? Sure. So, I mean, in terms of, you know, really providing the best in class experience for our customers, um, we've made sure to hire real veterans in the field, um, people who are truly passionate about what we're building, what we're trying to do um, from working with, you know, a, a super awesome local interior design studio to, uh, best in class instructors and wellness practitioners. We've, you know, really thought and obsessed over every detail from how um, intentional our design is and throughout the club um, to our FNB offering to our class programming. And, you know, to, to really reiterate my point earlier about listening to the customer, I think that's so key in ensuring best in class experiences. Um, listening to our consumer, being open to feedback. Um, we actually recently conducted a consumer behavioral study, um, asking questions that allowed us to tweak and better develop our products and services. So, yeah, we always want to keep these lines of communication open. What are your thoughts on design? Because I think when you are building a new brand, you're opening a new facility, um, you have a hundred and one choices, a million and one choices, GG, on what that design would look like. What is going through your mind in terms of what you want Trapeze to convey to your customers and generally as, a, as an ambience, as, a, as an ethos, what's gone through your mind in, the, in that design process? Great question. Um, so the Red Club has been quite intentionally designed um, in a very accessible and welcoming way. Um, I think something that's very important and, and close to, to my heart is, is making um, it accessible to all. So, you know, we've got um, uh, mobility, like we're accessible. Um, uh, we've got lifts in, lifts in the shop houses. Uh, we've got gender neutral toilets. Um, and, you know, we wanted it to really be super open and welcoming. Um, with lots of light, lots of nature. Um, we are... You know, I think we want it to feel like a second home almost. Um, yeah, so so when approaching the design of the club, we really um, try to have it be as, as open and, and, and warm as possible. Yeah, look, two very simple things, but people maybe not always consider those at the start of their design. Um, let's look at the Tanjong Pagar property. It opens 
Well, hopefully next month, but of course, maybe the month after, depending upon what's happening here with the Singapore situation. It's, um, we obviously will be seeing you open in the very near future, GJ. But um, when you do open, what are perhaps some of the milestones that you and the team are trying to hit perhaps in year one and then further down the line in years two and years three? Sure. Um, so, we, you know, we hope to open 19th June, um, fingers crossed. Uh, we want to get the club up and running. We want to perfect our products, our services, our experiences, um, essentially have it running like a well-oiled machine. Uh, then the plan is to open more Trapeze Red Club in various parts of Singapore. That's in the one to three year um, time zone, timeline. Uh, and then eventually we want to open uh, TRCs in APEC too. Uh, we've also got a couple of other wellness concepts in the pipeline that we hope to roll out soon. Would you ever consider franchising or licensing? I know it's, um, as you know, I think Michelle and I just talked about this previously. We had a franchise panel on just previously today as well. Uh, we've had so many exciting franchise businesses pop up, but of course it's it's not for everybody. It's a very different bag, as you know, from working across management consultancy. Um, what are your thoughts on franchising and uh, if it's a, a something that you may or may not consider? I think at this point, um, given that Trapeze Red Club is our first concept, um, and I think it's very much my baby, um, I'm not sure if, if you know, um, I, I would necessarily consider uh, franchising just yet. Um, I think, you know, potentially in the future for some of our other concepts, I think they, they, they will actually be quite scalable. They will be quite franchisable. So I, I, I definitely would be open to it. Uh, some of the other ones, but I think for for now, Trapeze Red Club, so trying to keep it a bit closer to, 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 to me, yeah. It's your baby. I understand. Keep it close. Let it grow. <laughs> enjoy that little early years. Absolutely. I think you. Um, Franchising is a step you can take at any time when you're ready to take it, right? So enjoy those first couple of years, GJ, as I'm, as I'm sure you'll know. Let's let's pivot the conversation to mental health because I know that you are a huge advocate for mental health and well-being. And as talked about across the last couple of days, um, there's been a lot of pressure on people's mental health and well-being. You're obviously designing that into part of the offerings within Trapeze, but more generally across mental health, what are your thoughts currently at the moment in time on how we can help each other, how we can help provide solutions, how we can collaborate to make sure that it's less of a stigma, it's more of an open conversation? Yeah, I mean, I think especially in Singapore, you know, it's so stigmatized. And I think it's because we don't talk about it enough. Um, I've been very blessed really to be surrounded by peers, by friends who are open about uh, mental health, who are willing to speak about, you know, some of the issues they might be facing. Um, and, and, you know, I think really just having more conversations about it. Like if you notice uh, someone around you isn't you know, at, at their best, it's just checking in and, and, and really, I think that's the first step, right? Um, and for us, you know, at the club as well, by introducing mental health um, as a service, uh, mental health therapy as a service, um, we hope to break down that barrier um, because a lot of the time when people think of going to therapy, they think, oh, I, I need to go to a, a doctor's clinic. You know, it, it can be quite sterile it can be quite inaccessible um but but the hope is that you know if we have this sort of service at, at a club um it's a great environment it's it's again open accessible um the, the hope is that we well, we will destigmatize destigmatize mental health yeah well, it takes brave steps, GJ, from people like yourself to actually involve this as part of your offering, right? And I think that's how we manage to get more awareness, get more education out there, how we really build awareness and empathy around the subject. And I think that's most important is how do we build yeah. empathy and sim more empathy than sympathy, should I say, but both are important. How do you really build that into a conversation and how do, we, how do people then have that as part of their daily life and daily health? Um, now, 
in your former and your younger years, GJ, you've competed in various sports at a competitive level. Um, you're no shortage. You're no uh, newcomer to competition, shall I say? But um, going forward, you've obviously got this baby. You're going to be investing a lot more time and energy in. What else are you going to be putting your time and energy in? What lessons have you learned from this pandemic? Sure. Um, so yeah, I, I, I competed in, in a couple of sports, but now I'm really trying to slow down. I think, um, I'm trying to set aside time every day now for meditation for doing yoga, um, trying to get into the habit of moving a bit more mindfully, um, not always like go, go, go. Um, and also you know, just incorporating a slower, slower practice. Um, and you know, another thing that I've, I've really enjoyed doing, uh, recently, um, is, spending time meeting other business owners, other entrepreneurs um, who are also passionate about wellness. Um, you know, there's, there's tons of, of like-minded businesses, initiatives here in Singapore, and, you know, uh, really looking forward to, to being a part of that community. One closing question, GJ, you are an entrepreneur. Um, of course, you've got quite a rich background in business and business management yourself um, from your previous career. Um, what advice would you give to entrepreneurs that are considering setting up businesses or indeed just in the midst of setting up their own business? Great question. I think dive head in. Um, I think it's always so easy to be apprehensive and to be afraid of taking the next step. but. You know, I think it's 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 really been very fulfilling for me, um, leaving uh, a safe corporate job um, and, and and starting trapeze. You know, I think it's it's really just having the courage to to do it, to just to stop. Um, and and also, you know, when you're in the thick of it, remember to take breaks, take mental health days for yourself because it can be a tiring. It, it is a long process. It's a it's a journey. Um, and you know, it's, it's not, it's not a, a, it's not a sprint essentially. Right. So, yeah. Well, look, thank you for that, GJ. I wish you and the team at Trapeze all the very best. I hope we can see you open in June. Uh, we look forward to coming and, and trying out the facility, all four floors and, uh, enjoying everything that you have. But, um, thank you very much for a very, um, very good conversation, GJ, and we'll see you face to face very soon.